Recently decided to replace the builder grade wire shelving in my kitchen cleaning closet with some custom wood shelves. It was a very easy project to do on a Saturday afternoon. So let me show you how I did it step by step. First up, we need to demo, clean everything out of the closet, then remove all of the wire shelving. Some of these brackets holding the shelving on I've seen are screwed in, some are nailed in. In my particular case, they were all held in by nails, so a pry bar was the easiest way to get behind there and get it all off. Once I got the four shelves out, I had to then take the rest of the little clips out with the pry bar. And it took a while to get all these out. There was a lot of clips holding each shelf in. When I finally got them all out, I had over 60 holes in the walls of this closet. So the next step is we're gonna have to fill all of those in before we can move forward with installing the new ones. First, I took a sanding block that I had. You could use sanding paper if you want. I just happened to have this block I needed to use up. So we wanna just lightly sand over all of the holes so that we can smooth out any of the drywall. We don't want any rough edges. After we're done sanding, we're going to fill all of the holes in. I like to use this heavyweight spackling. It's from DAP, it's called Drydex. I prefer it because it's pink when it's wet and then it dries white. So you know exactly when it's ready for the next step. So you're just going to place it into the holes here. You can apply it using either a plastic or a metal putty knife. I like to just wiggle it back and forth at the same time that I'm applying the pressure. It helps to just really work it in good on all sides of the hole. And then just continue on until you get all of the nail anchor and screw holes filled in. And as you can see here, now that I've got them all finished, we've got pink dots all over the wall that will change white when it is dry. Once it's dry though, you may have to go over them with a second coat because this tends to shrink a little bit as it dries, not much, but a little. So we're just going to put a second coat in any of the holes that we still see have voids in them. And once that second coat of the spackling dries, we'll just double check everything, make sure we have all of the voids filled in. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of the drywall edges. That's okay, as long as the void is completely filled in, we are good to go. Next, we'll take some sandpaper and you're going to lightly sand all of these holes that we just filled in. I use a 120 grit and we want to go all the way around to make sure we smooth all of those edges out and blend them in with the wall. After you're finished sanding, take a wet rag or a sponge and just get all of that drywall dust off of the walls. Next up, you're going to paint the walls. So get a couple of coats on there. You can prime first if you want. The dry decks from DAP doesn't require any priming because it's got like a primer technology built in. So I'm just gonna go over it with the paint. Saves a little bit of time and material that way. Now that we've got the walls all repaired and the paint is drying, let's work on building the custom shelves. For the materials of the shelves, I'm using a 1x12 for the shelf itself, and then for the supports, I'm using 1x2s. Now the 1x2s are actually primed MDF, and the 1x12 is a common board, um, but you can use any type of wood that you want. For the supports, you're going to make the back support the entire width of your closet. So in my case, it's 37 inches wide, so I will cut my 1x2s 37 inches. The side supports, I'm going to cut those 9 and 3 quarter inches long each. Each. So I'm using a 1x12 for the shelf, which is actually 11 and a quarter inches wide, and I'm going to have a back support and a front trim piece. We need to account for that. So I'll cut all of my 1x2s first. I'm going to cut them all 9 and 3 quarter inches for the two sides for each shelf, and then I'm going to cut two 37 inch long pieces for the front and the back. Next, I'll cut all of my 1x12 shelf boards 37 inches long. I love making these easy custom shelving because it's just a few simple cuts and you're off to the races. And here are all of my pieces cut and ready to go. For the boards, I have four 1x12s cut 37 inches long. For the supports, I have eight 37 inch long pieces and eight nine and three quarter inch long pieces. Next up, let's get the back and side supports screwed into the closet. We're going to make sure we get a stud on there. I'm going to put one in the middle and then one on each end. If you can't find studs, definitely use anchors. And be sure to use a level to make sure that you've got all of the side and back supports level as you go. And this is what it should look like then when you get all of your back and side supports in place. Now we'll place the shelves on the top. You can paint them, stain them, do whatever you want. 
add some polyurethane even. Finally, to finish off each shelf, we're going to add a trim piece. This just gives it a nice finished look and then also hides the unfinished edges of your side supports. So I'm just going to clamp that into place. And then I'm taking a nail gun and I'm going to nail that down once I move my hand out of the way. <laughs> then we'll get that nailed down all across the front. We're gonna nail down along the sides and along the back as well. Now, these one by twos were primed. You can paint them if you want. You can also fill in these screw holes. I didn't worry about it because this is just a cleaning closet, but it's up to you on how finished you want this look to be. And that's all there is to it. You can now enjoy your new custom built pantry or closet shelves. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I've got a link to all the materials that I used down below in the description, as well as the blog post if you wanna see this in written form. And of course, subscribe for more DIY Made Easy.